Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for sticking around. We're going to have, uh, I'm going to ask a few questions to get the, the uh, vibe going, and then um, you're going to have a chance to ask questions as well. So um, the fact that you're all still here means that you, like me, really enjoyed the film. And so, I'm gonna start with a bit of trying to find out what makes this filmmaker tick. Alessandro, what got you interested in the whole free party scene? So, well, initially, like probably anyone who went to a free party, I went there because, you know, I like to party for long and hard. And then, of course, you come to understand uh, the scene a bit better that, you know, it's not just a party, but there is a whole community around, uh, and this community can also create uh, artistic skills uh, like musicians, uh, VJs, uh, and uh, like a graffiti artist, or, you know, any kind of uh, art you can create in an underground uh, free party. Then, of course, along with my profession of being a filmmaker, at one point I decided, you know, I need to make a film to, you know, to, to know more, also for myself, you know, to investigate this uh, free party scene even more. Uh, because you know, looking around, there was kind of nothing that would go really in deep, but videos uh, that media, BBC would propose to us, uh, or Vice, and I think they never really gave voice to real artists that come from the free party scene, uh, and you know, they serve uh, uh, both legal, any legal parties, uh, you know, they never gave them voice to, you know, to express itself. I also did this, this film for everyone, but I think myself first. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, an evolution for me to understand. Uh, I myself, uh, uh, once I went to see Spiral Tribe, uh, Saint, almost, uh, you know, uh, Central Shoreditch, I had to spend a lot of money, you know, I was a young party goer and I was in my head, why am I paying 30 pounds? But then, you know, like uh, I try to, uh, you know, kind of talk to myself and say, well, you know, they've been playing for, uh, you know, over 25 years, so they're real musicians, you know, they, they make a living and same for every artist. So the fact that they come from the free party scene, it doesn't mean that they're selling out if they go to clubs. And because like many, many other free party goers were thinking like that, I thought, you know, this is something, this is a point that everybody should understand. So that's how like, the film um, originally uh, was, you know, was thought. Well, I think that's true. And I think that is probably one of the most really interesting things about the film, where you actually, you and the various people who are in the film talk about that, the, the struggle of the artist, which is a really old story that, you know, we have to live. And um, it doesn't matter what the, the, the art form is, we have to create that sort of relationship between creating our work, putting it out to people, and actually staying alive and being able to do it. And I think by bringing this question into the whole history of the rave history, the free party movement, is I think the thing that makes the film really unusual and interesting. So, I mean, my question is, next question is not just for you, but for everybody here. What, why do you think it's really important that this film has been made? Uh, well, I think it's important because uh, uh, it's, giving the uh, it's giving the opportunity to those who don't know much about the free party movement uh, to understand uh, probably the longest uh, counterculture we have nowadays. Uh, um, again, there haven't been many films about this that speak the truth and that can really give you tools to, you know, to appreciate and uh, see this scene from uh, different points of view. I think the thing is, there's never been anything really made about a free party scene. All the free parties back in the day, if you brought a camera in, you would just be instantly ejected. Um, so I think it's, it's an unknown force, but it's a massive force. I mean, you know, the technical movement across Europe, the squat party scene in London, and many other parts of the UK. <laughs> um, it, it, it's, it's, it's not, there's nothing, there's nothing out there. There's, no, there's nothing hardly written about it, let alone, you know, the funny thing that I think that I got from the film is watching all the artists defending the fact that people kind of go, you've sold out by doing this, but you've got to remember that those people have started and have stayed, Sebastian and Bacarex, all these people in the film, that, and Matt Weaserbuster and, and a lot of others, 
you know, they came from an underground scene, they stayed with an underground scene. We're not talking about, you know, we don't have this directed against, say, the Chemical Brothers, you know? They didn't come from an underground scene, they started in the mainstream, they ended in the mainstream. All these people are still doing free parties, whether they play in clubs. If you go to a club night run by these people, they're not like a club night, it's not like going to Ministry of Sound or, or you know, some club is in every mass, you know, mass produced kind of magazine or TV thing. They're still doing underground clubs. It's still a, a, a counterculture against the mainstream. And that is the thing that a film like this, no one knows about this unless you went to it. It's in the collective consciousness of all of us because we all went to those parties week in, week out, year after year after year. We remember it, we know this. It's in our memory. And for me, personally, I kind of like it like that sometimes. I just think it's something we all remember as a generation. But if you want to... And, and people learn from it. All the young sound systems now, there's loads of them. There's loads of free party stuff going on. You know, I'm 58 now, 52 when that film was thing. But I'm too old to go... I didn't go to the... Are you not? <laughs> yeah, well, Tick, t- you know, you know. I still turn up and play at your parties. Like, you know. But, but it, you know, I still go and play at free parties, but I can't be an active person running a sound system now, but we're still totally dedicated to it. I mean, none of us, like, none of the people in that film are rich. You know, none of the artists that you've interviewed, they're still dedicated to it, you know, and they're still doing underground things, you know. They're not from the mainstream in the beginning, and that's... Well said, well said. Just one thing about the film. Uh, Obviously, a lot of people here, it's their world, they know about it, and it's something, but it's what could be good for it is people who see it and get inspired by it. They don't know about it and go, oh my God, what, they go out and do this? Oh, I could do this. And that's really, really, I think, what, what is the best thing you're going to get from, hopefully, it being shown. Also, is, is the fact that it's, um, it's a new generation now that have, uh, are kind of taking, taking it on. And it's like, you know, we, we put the, the film like this to the next generation. You know, so we're, we're like the later generation and then they're doing it all now as well, but it's all related and the, the two things are linked. And, and it's funny because I've, I've noticed a lot recently that, you know, the, the techno is almost like, it's, it's almost a little bit more acceptable, but in a good way, you know, because it's like a lot of people are saying, oh, I'm gonna, like you maybe play techno and you say, oh, well, are gonna pe- people going to like it or not? But actually they love it and they want to hear that maybe more than other music. I'm just playing at some like little private parties and stuff like that. And like the way that people who are not really into techno have actually kind of like embraced it and they love it. And you're playing banging acid techno to them and they just like, wow, this is, this is a good reaction. So whether they, of what generation they are, you know, I think it's gone widespread. And we're backed up from the young gen- generation now who are really into the techno. It means it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's got a little bit more power with it, you know, but we're still with the same ethics that, we, you know, with the whole free party scene and how it's created, you know, and that, that still carries on. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, on that. I, I totally agree. I, I like what you said about the uh, younger generation. And I think it recalls what was said in the field that it's a movement that keeps regenerating itself. And that's been shown in, uh, you know, 35 years of subculture going on. Of course, it's got its ups and down. But, you know, it keeps, it keeps going, while uh, most of the other, if not like all the other subcultures, somehow uh, kind of stopped and faded, uh, while, you know, the free party movement, it's, you know, alive. The, in- the intention is, is there always. But you're up against all sorts of, there's, so, there's someone sitting in the audience here who's out every week, breaking, where, breaking into buildings and that, and now it's so gentrified London, you can't even find anywhere to... <laughs> <laughs> to actually do that. <laughs> Still finding a way, but it's an, it's an intention to, to, you know, it's the intent of why you do it, and that's what it's about, and however it happens. Absolutely. You know, they, you know, people think, oh, new generation of people, the way we are now, no one wants to do this anymore, you know, young people don't care. Well, they do, they are not different to us, it's just we're in a different world. One thing I think that made the film really interesting was the fact that you really took an international perspective. You didn't just look at the, the scene in one country. You really, you know, you talked about the roots here in the UK and then you looked at um, some examples from other parts of Europe. And of course, the scene is even bigger. Yeah, I think that, you know, just probably 
for the fact that I'm Italian. So, of course, I lived, um, you know, when I was a teenager, uh, early 20s, you know, I lived the rest of Europe, of European like style of, you know, going to free parties. And then when I moved to London, uh, you know, I, will, I, I faced a completely different kind of culture. But, uh, you know, after many years, I understood why it generated here and why it went to Europe. And I think it was Ryan from uh, Total Resistance that said uh, like a key sentence, which is, uh, you know, in the rest of Europe, um, uh, free party movement was uh, specifically linked to the techno music, while in the UK it was more of a gathering of people. And uh, I remember my first uh, free party in, uh, in London. I went there, you know, I was expecting, as usual, you know, like, banging techno basses while it was drum and bass and for me it was okay what's happening and at one point there was an MC rapping and for me it was like okay that's I'm gonna leave you know <laughs> but again I was I was not used to it you know like because here it wasn't about the music you know especially earlier on you go to the the squat parties and have you know, the, the, all the, the dub sound systems, you know, with one, one deck you'd have chill out sound systems with like uh, visuals and stuff like that where people just go and kind of relax and all this different stuff, you know, all sorts of people, different tribes all gathering together in one place. Yeah, I'd get cinema rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so this seems like... And Recknor doing punk rock, of course. Yeah, oh, I remember them, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. I, yeah. I want to say that one of the best free parties I went, there was a live band, which is something that in Italy, in the rest of Europe, personally, I never had the luck to see. But uh, here, it still happens, so rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> this seems like a great opportunity to take some questions from the audience. So we've got a mic. Hi there. Uh, thanks very much for the film. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this is a question more for the panel about the, uh, I guess it's about the last three years and what happened with free parties over the last three years during the pandemic. Um, there was quite a lot of free parties kind of while the lockdowns were still happening and you kind of had this strange uh, situation where you had like, you know, Save Our Scene and Home Base doing that big protest in London, but they were were protesting for something that the hard right at the Conservative Party were asking for as well. Um, so, you know, Chris, you were talking early on about the origins of that free party scene coming from the kind of synergy of the Beanfield people and the Ravers and uh, Castle Morton and all that. Do you still think that the people that scene today carries those same values forward from the late 80s, early 90s? Do you saying that it's regenerating? Do you think that those values that were there at the genesis of that scene are still prevalent today? Yeah, I think I think it is. I mean, it's it's a different time, a different uh, perspective on things. But I think all those sound systems that are operating now, I mean, to name a few like Red Tech and Techno Combat and a few, few of the others, they've all got the same like principles. You know, I mean, it, obviously they don't have the. I mean, for somebody like me, I lived through that era of pre-techno free parties, festivals, you know, but that era is now in, in the past, you know, so those young kids now, they don't know that. And you can see that in the reflection of the music um, in general, because in electronic music now, it's, it's just being raided from the past and every, anything goes. So the genres are all mixed up now, you know, in, in techno itself, you know, there's people sampling hardcore records and drum and bass, anything, you know, and they don't, the kids are, don't, they don't know the music and the history, they don't go, oh, this is trance, you know, and I, I don't want to use this in my record, they'll just sample it and go, oh, it's, it's great, it's rape music from the past, you know, and I think, so the ethos carries over into today, but it's not so well defined as it, perhaps it was for us, because we kind of see it as a, a living memory, you know, for these guys, they don't, you know, they don't remember Stone Angel, they don't remember, I mean, I went to that, that, that um, street party with home base and stuff, um, again, you know, save our scene. And I was just really, you know, again, I'm always amazed about how many people kind of come to these things, how many new rigs there are, how, you know, it is inspiring for me, you know, as an old person, going and seeing these young people doing all this stuff. But anyway, the, the, back to the film, just wanted to say one more thing about that. Um, you know, I thought it was really 
good that you actually managed to make a film because there isn't much footage out there. And that was, you know, big respect for, for actually putting something together that had, you know, covered everything. Well done for that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, talking about footage, I was wondering if there was a specific reason that you didn't use much like old footage, and and mainly the film film stuff was just like uh, new newer kind of stuff that's going on. And also, can I just say, I loved it, and I just want to shout out to kind of like Keith and Chaos and people that aren't here anymore that were around, you know, in the 90s. That you know. So well. Uh, the main reason why I didn't use too much footage was simple licensing. So this is a self-founded project. So I managed to create some deals uh, with the owners of the archive footage. But of course, I had a limited uh, uh, amount of footage I could use. And uh, the second reason is because you know I tried to create an evolution. So I started in the very late 80s, and and then I went on for over 30 years. So the archive footage really was uh, for those kind of uh, 12 years, between 88 and uh, late 90s. While from the first 2000s, uh, you know, the first uh, kind of mobiles with cameras, or you know, pocket cameras, could be brought to, you know, around, just in our pockets. So uh, much more footage was available. We can still call it uh, archive footage, if you want, it's still, you know, 22-year-old footage, so it's kind of archive. Uh, so, so, yeah, I use like archive, archive for the 90s, archive for the 2000s, and then uh, I, you know, I must really say thank you to the whole underground community. So there are a few, uh, let's say, free party-oriented groups on Facebook uh, where I explained my projects and I asked if anyone, you know, had some footage, some photographs, and have a massive support from everyone, seriously, like uh, they sent me pictures, they sent me any kind of, you know, video they had. I just want to ask, you guys, as kind of the older generation, do you have any advice for the younger generation going forward? Hello. Uh, yes. Um, well, I say, if you look at the film, you know, it's, it, it would inspire me. It means it's a do-it-yourself culture. It's about you have to get out there yourself. You form a group with your friends. You know, you pull together what, what you can, and you make your own parties. And that's, that's where it all came from. So you just take that ethos. It's the do-it-yourself ethos, really, rather than um, relying on joining a big organization or renting clubs, etc. It can be done, you know. And I, and I wish everyone now, you know, the best, you know, best vibes I could pass on possibly, you know, because it's your time, it's not ours. And, and also, it's basically, this is, is come from generations before. So that was handed to us, and then that can be handed on. So it just needs to keep on going through the generations. And just that, that kind of idea of the ethos of the, the subculture, basically. You know, which is uh, with films like this or the, the exhibition with the, the Stay Up Forever, the 30 Years of Stay Up Forever, it, it showed that. So if you can pass it on to generations, that's the best way it can be done. <laughs> Any more questions? Dramatic pause. So I just want to get a consensus. Acid, Molly, or both? <laughs> Good MDMA. shit. MDMA or acid, well, both, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we had a record on the set forever called A&E Department. Work it out. <laughs> okay, well, I just want to thank uh, you all for coming. I really want to thank the panel for being here. This is an absolute honor. And of course... And I really want to thank Alessandro for making the film. And I wish him all the success possible 
with this film. It's going on tour. If you know anybody in any of the other cities around that is going to be seeing it, call them up, tell them to be there. They will not regret it. Can I just say one more thing just about the film and the filmmaker? This is the DIY squat party ethic in this film. You know, get out, make the film yourself, do it yourself, bring it out yourself, get out on the road and promote it yourself. Yeah. And show it to people virtually for nothing. Mm -hmm.